When you first start working with a 3D pen, you will be disappointed how rough the surfaces look. I know I was. I wanted mine to look like this. And without hours upon hours of smoothing and sanding, there has to be a faster way, or three. So let's practice on some basic shapes first. Shall we? These three shapes are your teachers of the three basic kinds of angles. The octahedron will teach you how to make obtuse angles, larger than 90 degrees, the cube, the right angles, and the tetrahedron, the acute angles. Those are the ones smaller than 90 degrees. And that's all you need to know to make pretty much anything. So make sure to stick around to the end to see all of them. There are now videos on how to make all these basic shapes. The links are in the description as usual. In this video, let's concentrate on how to color them in. Filling it in like this is relatively easy. However, if you want it to look more finished, it gets a bit more challenging. So let's talk about the issues you will encounter one by one. First of all, it will take more time. Not surprisingly, since you have to go over the whole surface of each face. And let's remember that the real speed of the pen is actually this. And that's not the most time-consuming part of the job either. Just wait until you get to the sanding. Let's look at the other three challenges with the thought of how to save time. The delicate line drawings are very forgiving. If something doesn't quite fit, you can make it fit. I am not stressing about my lines either. They don't have to be completely straight. And what's a few bumps in the corners from starting and stopping the pen? No big deal. However, shapes like these do not fit together too happily. If the shape is solid, it better be straight. So it lines up with the one next to it. Or the shape won't ultimately fit together. Because the bumps waste space. So let's make our lines as straight as possible. And with an overhang. So we'll leave the stopping and starting bumps behind. And then fill it in carefully and tightly. If you are working on a flat surface, the back side of this will come out pretty smooth. Even though you will still be able to see the layer lines a little bit. Then I'll trim the corners. And we have a reasonably precise triangle to get started with. If we proceed just like in the octahedron video, by the rolling method, adding on face by face, we will inevitably run into some messy imprecisions. That will take a ton of time to clean up. And look at this. Oh, yuck. We need a better plan. Remember in the octahedron video I said don't make all the eight triangles beforehand because you will be doubling up the outlines. Well, if the triangles are solid, there are no outlines to double up, right? So go ahead, make all the eight triangles before you start the assembly. At least you will know they are all straight and smooth enough and can fix any mishaps now before you attach them to the whole project. Solid projects you have to tape, like you mean it. This tape will prevent any accidental seam leakage. Now we will need to attach it at just the right angle, actually not right, but more like 109 degrees, if you want an octahedron. So please do watch the octahedron video if you missed it, 
because the use of the angle support, the setting of the dihedral angle and assembly process will be the same from now on. Clip it and again tape it like you mean it. The more stable it is, the more precision you get, which equals better fit and less cleanup. Speaking of cleanup, make sure you are assembling the shape with the smooth sides out and the bumpy ones towards the inside of the shape where you won't see them. Here we go. You can see I get way cleaner edges with the tape method. Not entirely perfect, but we will fix that shortly. I get to the fourth phase, I will tape both of the remaining seams to make sure it will ultimately fit together as a pyramid. one more time. And before I lose the access to the inside, if you want a stronger structure, just add one layer of plastic. You can line the whole thing with one or more layers to make it as strong as you wish. I don't like sanding, mostly because no matter how much of it you do, it's never enough. So here are a few hints on how to minimize it. We already discussed working carefully on a smooth surface, which will give you one textured side that will face the inside and one fairly smooth one that still shows some layer lines, but not too bad. It's definitely sandable without having to smooth the whole surface with a melt tool first. Here are some dents around the edges, but we will have to clean up the edges anyway, as I will show you shortly. But since we are starting with a bunch of flat planes, we also have the option to finish them all beforehand, either by baking, which will produce a glossy surface, or by ironing, which will produce an even matte surface with a subtly canvas-like texture if you are ironing on Teflon sheets like I do. And then you don't have to sand the faces at all, just the edges. Here is our finished half of octahedron. Some of the seams will need some attention. And yes, now we will smooth, but just on the corners which is way easier and faster than all over.
unfortunately there is still some sanding to do but again not as much I will actually cut some of the excess plastic off with a Dremel tool armed with a carbide cutting burr file bit before I start sanding there is a link in the description in the tools and materials section if you are looking for this set of bits I'll start with 120 grit I like these sanding sponges for this job because they nicely hug the corners and then you can progress to finer grits as many as your patience allows before you decide you are done or just give up these look sort of done even though I could still keep going because as I said sanding is never done just wanted to mention that doing this in solid colors especially light ones is the hardest thing you can choose to do because every little scratch and dent will show I personally prefer not to go there except for this video I thought I should demonstrate it's possible my preferred solution is to make colored veneers that are much more forgiving where the pattern will distract the eye from any imperfections of the finish however if you prefer to sand prime and paint you can definitely do that too I just wanted you to know there are alternatives finally the elephant in the room issue I know you have been asking this whole time how do you put the last piece in obviously it's better to assemble all the seams from the inside and initially that's easy nice corner eventually you reach a point where the access with the pen gets difficult plus you can't really see what you're doing which will prevent you from doing a clean job so let's back up and plan a little I need to plan how to close this front side and put the last face on I can still reach the sides of this face but the back of it looks difficult so I will deploy the clamshell trick the idea here is to work with the plastic when it's melted as it comes out of the pen before it has a chance to solidify so let's try this connect the two shapes on a solid surface while it's open close it shut while it's still soft and hold until it's cold obviously this only works for relatively small objects good corner now I can seal the two inner sides I could reach and progress to the lid I can repeat the clamshell trick with one of the sides of the lid but we'll have to inevitably seal the last three sides from the outside which could be potentially messy but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so far so good now for the messy part attach a line to the edge of one of the still open seams make it several lines thick and then invert the corner onto it and hold came out pretty good now it's time to make all the corners look the same with the melt tool and back to the grindstone 
literally. Yeah, and of course, sanding. This point of no access comes at different stages for every shape. So sometimes it's easier to assemble shapes from two halves, like with the octahedrons we started ma making earlier. Clamshell seam again, and then we'll make the three messy ones from the outside and hope for the best. So here we have our edges. The eight sides on the two tops are already done and finished. The clamshell seam looks okay. The other three closed from the outside are super messy and will require a lot of cleanup. But I would rather clean up three bad edges than 12 bad edges or even the whole thing. One last issue. What about that acute angle from the tetrahedron? where we had to work under the angle finder, remember? You might want to rewatch that video. Okay, deploying clamshell trick again. Quickly stick it under your 70 degree corner and hold. Good initial seam. Now the next face should have enough access to attach it from the inside. And for the last face, the clamshell seam again to seal the piece in. Let me show you this step from a different angle this time so you can see what's going on. And here we'll have only two sides to seal from the outside. And here is where you get your comeuppance for imprecision. It will seal, but these will take a ton of cleanup. But again, better two seams than all. Here we go three basic shapes that will teach you all you need to know about making angles. And you will need the angle making tool for making all those angles. So here's a video on how to quickly make yourself one of those, plus a playlist for making all those shapes. Also, subscribe, ring the bell and leave me a comment about what you would like to know about working with 3D pen.